so much for tuning in to watch this video. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for new punk rock videos every week. Drop a comment on this video and give the video a share if you want to support my DIY channel. And if you're interested in advertising on my YouTube channel, feel free to email me at lastrockerstv at gmail.com. And don't forget to subscribe to Last Rockers TV, the podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Amazon Music. <laughs> My name is Aaron Micklow, and I'm here with Steve Ignorant of Crass. How are you? Yeah, uh, I'm okay. Um, sort of, I'm being very careful because uh, sorry to lay on you, but I suffer from depression, and I can feel it um, coming. So um, yeah, I'm fighting it off at the moment. But why is that? Your set last night was so amazing. Do you is that something that comes on after like a really good performance? No, it's just something that I've, um, it's like a prison sentence for life. You know, I can never tell when it's going to come. Yeah. Uh, and other people who suffer from depression will understand this. Um, that it, it just comes, but you can feel it coming. You know, yeah. it's always there and, you know, here I come. Here I, you know, you have a great night like last night mm -hmm. and uh, the other two days I've had. Um, but now it's like, okay, now you're going to pay for it. Yeah. So it's, you know, so do excuse me. I'm so sorry. Mm, no, we all suffer from it, so. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've definitely been through my bouts of that. About two months ago, I started a transcendental meditation practice. And right. that's, that's helped a lot, because yeah. it's like you, you let yeah. go of things of like, what's going on? Like, I, I can say that after every rebellion, I, I would get like depressed about it. I was like, I'm back home and I miss everybody. And it was yeah, so stimulating yeah. and everything yeah, was yeah. so fun. And yeah. Um, yeah. So that's why I was wondering if, if that maybe was true at all for you of just like after like so much stimulation of like that that can be part of it but I just it, I don't know what it is other than I've talked to other people spoken to other people who suffer from it as well but it's and even if um, you were depressed in the same way I was I could explain what I'm going through and you could explain what you were going through yeah um, but my depression is unique to me and yours is unique to you so you yeah. can't explain yeah. it um, but the only way I can explain it is that some you know you know, when I get it, uh, I just feel like I'm a complete and utter prick, you know, and uh, everything I've done is stupid. And why on earth, how stupid are people for buying my records? And it's total rubbish. So anyway, let's move on. Yeah. What kind of, can I ask what kind of things you do when this, how do you overcome when this happens? Uh, I go away and um, just sit by myself, listen to certain sorts of music, um, which sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. Sometimes alcohol works for me. Uh, not a, not a good thing to do if you're depressive, but sometimes it does. Um, or I just sit in a corner and and wait, you know, and hope. Yeah. Just wait and hope, you know. So. Do you ever get sparks of creativity to to write or anything like that when you're having that, or does that something that maybe comes after you? Get no, through it's, it? it's t I've I've tried that, but it's totally debilitating because then all you write about is the, and it comes out as you're being really um, self. Uh, what's it called? Self loathing. Well, or self. Uh, you know, egotistical sort of, you yeah. know, oh, poor me, boo hoo, you know, self deprecating. Uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. 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 I know it. I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> you just, yeah. you have, you have well, to go this through This is a those. very chirpy interview, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that is very, um, well, I think it has to be said because, you know, yeah. it's uh, mental issues are something that we've got to, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's very English, though, too. A lot of my English friends is like, I'm sad today. And I feel like in, in America, like, we're starting to get more to talk about it. But um, I do feel that people, like, hide it. Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> we, yeah, we're great actors. Yeah. You know? Yeah, uh, yeah I'm fine today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so 
Nice. Well, thank you for still being here to to come and, and chat with me. I Excellent. think it's it's important to talk about it. Um, I do want to talk about your set last night. Yeah. Um, can we talk about how the current lineup of your band came together? Yeah. Uh, way back in two thousand two thousand and seven, I did a a gig at Shepherd's Bush Empire, uh, two nights of uh, feeding of five thousand, and um, so I was like, that was it. Um, but then people wanted me to do more craft stuff. Mm -hmm. So then uh, 2011, I did the Last Supper tour, which was going to be me and my big mouth. This is the last time I'm ever doing it. Um, so I uh, got a band together. And um, that's how I met um, Becky uh, Strawn from Loaded 44, was originally the female vocalist. Mm -hmm. She couldn't do America and because of family commitments. Um, so that's when I um, met Carol Hodge, who became the uh, a female vocalist. Um, Bob Butler, who's the original bass player, sadly he's gone from us, but um, you know, he couldn't do a certain part of the tour, so that's when Carol said, oh, my partner plays bass, mm -hmm. and that's how I got Pete Wilson. Mm -hmm. um, and I met Jay through uh, the drummer, through Paranoid Visions, working with them, and I thought, he's brilliant, I'm gonna nick him, so I did. And, <laughs> and uh, Pete Rowe, I met doing Slice of Life gigs, and uh, um, him and Pete Wilson are lifelong friends yeah. since school, so that's how it came together. Yeah, the set was great last night. It was it was obviously my first time getting to see you perform those songs, and it was it was amazing. I really enjoyed it. Right. Can you talk about um, you know, for the people that might be like, oh, well, why don't they have more original members? Why are they performing these songs again? Like, <laughs> well, because I the reason there's no original members is because I'm 65 years old. Penny Rambo is 80 something. Uh, all the rest are 70 something. So that's why. Yeah, yeah, for and, the for the uh, confusion of anybody like, oh, Steve Ignorant Band performing Crass set. It's like you can't really go up there and say Crass. No. Yeah, but you can say it, but those are your songs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'll, I'll, you know, and I'll keep doing them for as long as I can because I still think they're relevant. And, um, and what I love about the band that's around me at the moment is that somehow uh, they've taken those Crass songs and made them sound fresh. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's almost like they could have been written last month. Yeah. Or so. It's really bizarre what they've done, and uh, they've done that on their own. Yeah. You know, so that's amazing that, that, that these younger people in their 40s or whatever, Jay's, I would say, 30 something, or whatever, and they're just putting their own thing. No, this is our thing. Like, great, go for it. Um, no, I agree with that, though. Seeing your, your live performance last night and then this morning when I was getting ready, listening to, to the recordings of it, it sounds very similar, mm. you know, and the, the live set last night had so much energy, like um, listening to the song that she sang on her own, the one the one about the red heels. I, I forgot the name of the song. Burke Tex. Yes. Yeah. That one. And it was just it sounded so similar and mm -hmm. it was it was great i really enjoyed the message of that as as a woman of like hey look pretty sit down and <laughs> because it is i mean you know women i feel like we're conditioned and, and groomed to just laugh and smile things off and just be pretty and um you know sit down and be controlled go and go in your box Yes, yeah, so that's why it was really important to um, put even more of the Penis Envy songs in there, um, mm -hmm. like the female songs, if I can put it that way, um, so that Carol could do that. Um, because I think, you know, anything that inspires uh, women to, uh, you know, to get up there at the same, you know, let's stop this inequality of men and women. For mm -hmm. It's still there. You know, I mean, people are more aware of it, but let's face it, there's still an imbalance and inequality. Yeah. Um, so if Carol can do that and inspire a 15 year old girl in the audience to go and start her own band, then that's what you do. Yeah, that's amazing. Mm. So obviously, like we just talked about, these songs are still relevant today um, because that was gonna be one of my questions to ask, like, you know, how, how has the music kind of grown over these years? I mean, these songs are still extremely relevant. 
yeah, and that's the sad thing because you know, um, I thought we'd write those songs and the world would change and we'd no. all be living in, you know, we'd all be living in, you know, beautiful sunshine and um, you know, all, everybody happy and no more war. Unfortunately, it's not like that. But uh, no, I don't know um, how the music's changed. I'm not a musician. None of Crass were. Um, but I, I, I just think, um, you know, what we're doing is the right thing at the right time. I think so. I think it's this. I feel the same with these interviews, talking to artists like yourself and just being open and vulnerable to we have to keep talking about these issues. And it's the only way to maybe some people will change. Some people won't. <laughs> and, I, and I think also it's important to point out that we're not trying to be a crash tribute band. We are doing those crash songs in our way. Yes. So it's our interpreter or it's their interpretation of it. I'm just a mouthpiece. Let's face it, you know, but I'm pretty fucking good at it. Um, <laughs> Um, so, you know, that's what that's important to point out, you mm -hmm. know, because if I felt it, we would be in a pastiche of crass or something, I'll, no, that's embarrassing. I'm not doing that. So it's got to be from the heart. Yeah. Kick your head in. And <laughs> if you don't like it, fuck off. <laughs> So um, you guys are coming over to America at the end of September. Yeah. Uh, you have a few dates leading up to your Riot Fest date. Yeah. Um, when's the last time you guys were in the U.S.? Uh, that was, fuck, you know, uh, da, 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 two, three but, uh, before COVID. Okay. Yeah. And then were, which, were you over there performing the Crass set? Or were you yeah, with, I was, what, I was there bands? with Paranoid Visions. Okay. Uh, and we were doing sort of Crass songs and, and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I think the last place we played in America was at Punk Rock Bowling, I think. Yeah. Uh, in Las Vegas. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's awesome. So what kind of things do you do to get to get ready to come to America for these shows? Uh, go down a pub. Um, <laughs> try not to get angry about all of the forms you have to fill in to get your work visas <laughs> to go to America and how much it costs. Because you're actually doing it the right way instead of, just, <laughs> instead of just coming over like a tourist. No, like... the thing is, I can't do it. Oh, what are you doing? I'm on holiday. Oh, what's your name? Uh, Steve Igram. Oh, hang on. Clickety, click, click. Oh, so you're playing tomorrow night at so and so. Can't do it. But I mean, so, ignorance not your actual last name. No, it isn't. So couldn't, couldn't you just kind of like, oh, I'm just here on holiday? No, that, no. <laughs> listen, if, every time I go through customs, it's like I can't, I can't look innocent. Do you know what I mean? It's like come over here. Like for fuck's sake, right? Okay, what's in your bag? You look. So uh, yeah, no. We, we, um, and plus, my passport has got work visas in it. Oh. So now they know that I've, you know. You should have just done it the the sly way the whole time. Yeah, I'd, I'd, uh, the trouble is, no, it's it's not possible. Yeah, it, it's you know those days have gone, unfortunately. So yeah, you're too known. Yeah. So, uh, but anyway, to prepare for it, I'm just like, okay, it's going to be a different scenario. It is different from England. Um, you know, you do have a different culture there. Mm -hmm. uh, you certainly have a different language. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, my God, to try and to hear Americans try and speak French is just like my God. Thank God you don't try and speak English. Is all I can say. So, <laughs> like, can you give an example? What do you mean specifically? Uh, tomatoes, broccoli. Okay. No, it's broccoli, not broccoli. broccoli. Yeah. Yeah. yeah broccoli. Like I had, I had the thing here. Um, I, the first day I got into London, um, I was staying with a girlfriend, and we were looking at a takeout menu, and I was like, aubergine, and she just laughed at me. She's like, aubergine. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, what? It's an eggplant. Yeah, but I went into a, I was taken to a vegan restaurant by a mate of mine. Fuck. Um, uh, what, what's this keen? What's this? Uh, quinoa. Quin quinoa. <laughs> no, it's quinoa. Uh, why don't you spell it like that? It's Fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys don't really do quinoa here that much. Uh, no, it's horrible. <laughs> you taste it, the texture of it, it's like, ooh, it's like fucking fish vomit. <laughs> so, nice nice to know you struggle like how I struggle when I come here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but now again, to prepare for America, you, you just sort of get ready for it. You know, it's going to be full on. Um, you know, people are going to be coming up to me. Oh, Steve, you know, da 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 you prepare for it, you prepare for it, you get ready, you know, go to the gym, um, you know, and just crack on with it. <laughs> She's saying, no, you don't go to the gym. <laughs> no, I'll go in the garage and drink beers. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, love. There goes my street cred. <laughs>
Let's talk about your other band, Slice of Life, played Rebellion yeah. this weekend, which is obviously much, much different. Yeah. Um, can you talk about how that band differs from your crass songs, your crass set? Uh, the, the idea of, uh, for years and years, even when I was in, a, let's say, uh, Conflict, all mm-hmm. those years ago, I had this idea of doing some sort of acoustic thing. Yeah. And this is before it came trendy, when people were doing acoustic sets at the Albert Hall and all this stuff. And I always had this idea of doing it or writing something like a, um, a, a radio play. Um, so I'd just talk it and there'd be incidental music, you know. <clears throat> and it took it took me until um, The Last Supper when I met Karen and Pete, um, lead guitarist and vocalist, as you know. And they said, what are you going to do after this? And I went, I'm thinking of doing the acoustic type thing. And, they, and I said, would you be interested? And I went, oh yeah, yeah, we would. So we started it very tentatively. It started off as a sort of spoken word thing, which was awful, uh, very embarrassing, but it's gradually developed into this. Um, we're all in the same wavelength. So, you know, I come up with um, a few chords on the on the keyboard and then pass it over to Carol and she sort of farts about of it and makes it sound brilliant. And I can play a little bit of acoustic guitar, open chords, give it a Pete, he makes them sound brilliant. And that's how it works. But it's really, I think for, for me, Slice of Life is like addressing um, it's the older me mm-hmm. talking, and it's more personal. Yeah. Um, but what I've noticed is that a lot of people in the audience, in their fifties and sixties, you know, sort of connect with that. You know, like I do a song about depression, for example, and yeah. quite often people come up. Oh, my son goes through that, and yeah, yeah. So it's it's that really, and, and I just wanted to. I just had this idea of like coming to something like Rebellion. Okay, I'm going to see Sid Snot on the shit houses or whatever they're called and jump up and, well, not jump up and down, I can't do that anymore, but, and then come and see Menace and come and see Cockney Rejects and rah, all faster. No, all I want to do now is sit down quietly yeah. and have a little bit of mellow music, you mm-hmm. know, so that's, I think that's what I try and provide, yes. certainly Rebellion. So, you know. Well, I mean, Rebellion has a really good mix of that. I mean, Friday night, I was really tired. Or Thursday night, I was tired and done with work for the day. And, and also this being a European festival, like, my God, these festivals here go forever. Yeah, yeah. They go forever. Yeah, it's like yeah. they start at like noon and you're yeah. literally, they're ending at like two in the morning. I know, which is, for me, it's too much. You know, it's too It's a late. lot. It's, it's a lot. Like, yeah. And I stumbled upon like a little um, rock steady dance party the other night. And I was like, right. oh, this is a nice way to close yeah. the night. A little, little slower still, but like, yeah, you know, yeah. not, not quite so sleepy absolutely yeah so I, i definitely feel you on that Um, you have a new book out this weekend as well, yeah. right? It's a photography book. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a bit like um, I suppose you call it almost like a scrapbook about a tour we did last year. Yeah. Uh, the whole thing, which was meant to have happened in 2020. Yeah. But, but thank you, you know this bloody illness that everyone was getting. Um, so yeah, that's basically it, you know, and it's uh, lo- loads of photographs and little bits of writing. That's so, awesome. Yeah. So how did this book come together? And I saw that you you collaborated with someone, a, a photographer, yeah, to make Simon it? Yeah, Simon Ballam, yeah. Okay. And yeah. how did you guys work together? He They followed you around and took the photos? Yeah, well, uh, Simon's been in the crash since he was a teenager, you know. And, and I first met him in Belgium when we were, I was with Slice of Life, and we were supporting Sleaford Mods. And, um, and me and Simon were talking, and I said, look, I'm, f- you know, Simon, what do you think about me doing the crash stuff again? And he went, oh, that'd be amazing, that'd be amazing. So um, 
that's where we first met. And then, so we collaborated. So you knew about logistics and moving stuff from one place to the other. Mm -hmm. So um, I said, well, would you help the owner, you know, to do this stuff? And that's how it came about. So he, um, and also as a photographer. Yeah. So there you go. That's so awesome. Out, yeah. So you have that one, and then you had two other books on your merch stall this weekend. Yeah, as the well, autobiography, right? and then the one after that, the, the follow on. So the autobiography is me from being a kid growing up, and it finishes at the Last Supper. And then uh, the, the other one carries on from Last Supper, going through Slice of Life and how that started, and you know, amazing. Well, I'm still doing it, yeah. And so for anyone else that wants to buy these books that's not here this weekend, um, is are they available online? Yes, they are. What's your what's your website? Now you're asking. <laughs> what's the website? Do you know? Steveignorant.com. Steveignorant.com to buy those. <laughs> 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 yeah. Go buy some stuff so he can get his work visas to come to America. Yeah, oh no, we've got, we've got the work visas, but fuck, maybe it's that a bloody pine. Jesus Christ. So what else do you have um, coming up for the band and in your personal life? Uh, for the band, we've got a few more gigs um, this year. Uh, then next year, uh, we've got a, a few more gigs in basically England. Yeah. Um, oh, we might be going to Mexico or something like oh, that. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. That'll be fun. Yeah, so that's when we're going to try and arrange around Mexico, um, like maybe us, um, Los Angeles. Yes. So we can sort of do that. Um because it seems silly to go to Mexico just for one concert. Yeah, I mean, if you if you go through all that trouble and you have to obtain your work visas because you're doing yeah. it the right way, yeah, you might as well book kind of a little package of shows. Yeah, absolutely. While you're there yeah. Just to help cover expenses as well. Yeah, um, yeah. So that's what we're doing. And in personal life, um, just sort of, I don't know, um, just winding down, winding yeah. down. See how it goes. Let's see how I feel tomorrow. Yeah, well, hopefully yeah, so, you'll feel better tomorrow. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I will, but, you know, I feel I'm getting a bit emotional, so um, mm. I, I'm going to have to stop. I'm so sorry. So, no, no, I'm I'm sorry to listeners or whatever, or viewers, you know, it's about... Well, that was all the questions I had anyway, oh, so well, I want to say what, thank what you. What a good timing, yeah. Thank you what so much timing. for giving me some of your time today. No, thank you. I'm Steve Ignorant. You're watching Last Rockers TV.